Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to yet another episode of Sabbath School in Eden, a Bible study program that is brought to you by the Edenvale Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are based on the eastern side of Johannesburg in South Africa under the Northern Conference. The Garden of Eden was the first schoolroom. Nature was the first lesson book, and Adam and Eve were the first students. God himself was the first instructor. It is our hope that through these Bible study lessons, God himself will instruct you in his word. And I am joined to, today by uh, a brother of mine who I'm going to let uh, uh, introduce himself. Over to you, my brother. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is uh, Brother Nigel Chawira, and I worship at uh, Edenvale Church. Thanks, Brother Nigel. And thank you for taking the time to study this lesson um, together with us today. Mm. And we do welcome... You, our viewers, please do join us and hope you'll be blessed through the study today. But before we get into our lesson, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Nigel to pray for us. Shall we uh, pray together? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful and blessed day that you blessed us with and for everything that you've done for us. We also humbly come before you to thank you for the gift of life. Dear Lord, I pray that you may open up our hearts and our minds to the message that you will be giving us today. And I pray that you may be with all the listeners out there, Lord, who are listening to the word. And I pray that they may apply these principles into their lives. I pray all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayer. So today we are studying a Mission to the Needy. And um, as you've been following our lessons, we are in the series where we are studying God's mission, our mission, and maybe to personalize it, um, God's mission my mission, and we've really um, dealt into this subject, touched a lot um, on God's mission and what mission is and my involvement. So we are continuing with my involvement in God's mission, um, and the title or the theme of our study um, today is Mission to the Needy. Our key text comes from Matthew chapter 25, and the verse is 40, and I'll read it. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. So as we read this verse, as we look and zoom into it, um, what Jesus is saying is, as you, whatever you've done to the, for the disadvantaged, um, we have done it um, for God himself. And throughout this lesson, as we are going to find out, um, we're going to see that God is in the business of helping the needy. Mm. But to help the needy, he has to do that through us. Mm. We become his hands and his feet. Mm. Um, as, we, as we maybe um, get into a discussion, I'll ask you um, to help understand uh, the needy. We always use this term mm. um, so many times. Maybe it's lost its meaning. Mm. Um, to you, what, what, how would you define the needy? Um, I think from my point of view, the, the needy, or to be needy, is a person who lacks um, in a specific area. Mm. They might not have the resources to fulfill something in a specific area in their life. Mm. Um, like for example, um, if I want to make a cup of tea, mm. you know, I might not have sugar. That means I'm lacking in that that specific, ingredient, yeah. that ingredient, mm -hmm. in order to complete the full cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So a needy person is something who who lacks something in a specific area. If you if we take it in our life, you might need something that you are lacking spiritually, physically, um, and 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 all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. I think a needy a needy defining the word needy. It's just, yeah, yeah. lacking in a specific uh, So, So you, you mentioned spiritually, financially, mm. emotionally, you know, all, all those other, you know, areas that we, we, may, we may be lacking. So as we started off the lesson, mm. um, we mentioned that God is in the business of meeting people's needs. Mm. And sometimes it's, it's through us. And we'd like to, you know, look at how we can actually um, be part of, God's mission. There's a story of friends mm. that helped a friend mm. uh, to to get to Jesus, and we find uh, you know the faith of friends. Maybe if you can un unpack that for us and what your 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 key thoughts are on that. Yes. So if we look at the story of um, a friend helping a friend, was uh, with the story of a man who 
who was a paralytic, mm -hmm. um, which means that you know he was lacking a, a physical need. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was a paralytic, obviously meaning he couldn't, he couldn't walk and he couldn't basically do certain things that yeah, you was, and I could do. He was bedridden. He was bedridden. Mm -hmm. And his friends took it upon himself to help him out in his time of need, mm -hmm. right? So they had heard that Jesus is in the area and they had heard what Jesus can do, can do. for yeah. their friend. They knew exactly what Jesus was capable of because of the stories that they have heard in the past. Mm. And because of their faith, because of their faith, they decided to, to take this person to Jesus, where he was preaching. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they got there, um, they realized that the house was full. So they took it a step further to say, "Hey, our friend is in dire need. We cannot miss this opportunity." Yeah. How, how do we get hold of this? How do we get hold of, of this opportunity that our friend needs? And they took it a step further and they actually carried their paralytic friend to the roof in order to bring him down close to so Jesus. So there was some, some muscle required there. To, there was to, some muscle required. To pull up the person I mean, up to the roof. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know how much a full-grown man can, can weigh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not light. It's not light. So I think the story is showing the extent um, to which the friends went to to bring their friend to Jesus. To Jesus. Yes. Yeah. So I think, yeah. 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 Thank you. And, you know, as, you, as you're narrating that story, um, there are a few things that, that jump out there. Mm. And maybe you can help us unpack these. And this story we find in the book of Luke chapter 5 from verse 17 to verse 26. Mm. Um, a few things that jump out there are, you know, um, that the faith of the friends, mm -hmm. action, mm. Uh, patience, mm. and willingness as well. Not in, 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 uh, not in any particular order. Um, how would you maybe speak to these, the faith, the willingness, the action, uh, the patience yes. that is required when we are helping friends? So if we really look at the mission of Christ, all of those elements were combined into mm -hmm. a certain process mm -hmm. which he used in order to, 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 to help these people, mm -hmm. to help the people in need. And um, with these uh, five steps, um, which I, I would like to just introduce to you now. Mm -hmm. The first one was that Christ mingled with the helpless, mm -hmm. right? He mingled with the helpless in order to try and understand what their needs what are. What their lack was. What their lack was, mm -hmm. yes. And also just to, yeah, to understand what their lack was so that he is able to help them, mm -hmm. right? Then the second step that Christ would do is he would show sympathy to whoever was in need, mm -hmm. right? Now, I, I like the word sympathy there, and I think point two is, is quite powerful there because the word sympathy in itself means to, to feel sorrow or pity for someone's situation. Mm -hmm. um, another word for it, um, a synonym, could be understanding, mm -hmm. right? Jesus understood the person's need. Um, yeah. And this was, you know, step two. Yeah. So uh, maybe if I can just hold, you know, um, that's, also, that's a powerful point because we also see in the life of Christ, mm -hmm. When Lazarus died, yes. the Bible also records that when he saw Martha, Mary, and the people that were around sorrowful, he was moved with compassion. Yes. And Jesus wept. Mm. So that um, so Jesus wept along with them, mm. and he weeps along with us today mm. um, when we are in those uh, situations of lack or yes. of need. Mm. Yeah, thanks. I just thought maybe I should just um, interject there, but... Do go ahead, yeah. Not a problem, not a problem. And yeah, I just still want to touch more on that uh, second point of, you know, sympathy. And it's, it's a very good way to approach people who are in need. Mm. Because, you know, certain problems that certain people might have are very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And we need to approach those situations with, you know, a sympathetic heart. Mm. You know, a couple of years ago, someone approached me with a problem. And... Unfortunately, I wasn't in a position to assist them with that specific need that they needed. Mm -hmm. And I, I directed them towards someone else. Who could assist. Who could assist, yeah. right? Um, I think there were two people that I diverted them to. Um, the one person was just a person, and then the other person was one of the parent of the person that needed the need. Do you know how this person responded? His response was, they wouldn't understand. Mm they wouldn't understand. So like if he was to go to them, they won't understand his they situation. Won't, they won't understand his situation. Yeah. So in other words, 
he had seen you and he had known you. Yes. And to him, you were the person who could help because you yes. understood. Because I understood mm. the person's situation. Yeah. And so it was just unfortunate that, you know, I couldn't help that particular situation. But, you know, that, that response really, it, it really touched me. Yeah. So maybe while we are there, I just mm. also want to put a pause there and oh, maybe yeah. address our viewers and say, mm. um, uh, f- just from the point that has been mentioned here, uh, when someone approaches you, probably in their eyes, you are the person that understands them mm. and that needs that uh, who is able to meet their needs. So as they do so, as they approach us, let us ask ourselves the question, mm. out of all the sea of people that is surrounding us, why would this individual actually single me out and reach out to me? I, th- I think that is a very powerful point and yes. powerful thought mm. for us to carry. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as we go on, as I said, the first step that Christ took was that he mingled with the helpless, yes. right? As we see in uh, one of the stories, um, I think it's uh, in John 5 verses 1 to 9, mm-hmm. um, where Jesus went and... There was a lame man by there the was pool. There a lame man by the pool. Yes. yes, you know that story. You're familiar yeah. with it. And he wasn't the only person there that had a need. Mm. There were also others who were in need. But these are the type of places that Jesus found himself, Mm. right? So that's first tip. Number two is to sympathize with their problem. Listen to them, hear what they have to say, so that you know in which area you can help them. You can, yeah. Yes. And then the third step is to minister to their need. Yeah. So after you know the person, you know where they're from, and you know what they're going through, you are able to assist directly the the specific need that Mm -hmm. they needed. Yeah. If you look at Christ's miracles, right? If you went to 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 the doctor today, for example, and you say you have a headache, he's not going to give you medication for a stomach ache. Mm-hmm. He's going to give you things to help with your headache. Yeah. So that's the whole point of getting to know to mingle with people. To mingle with people. So that you know where they are stationed. Yes. And then you're able to to help accordingly. Yes. And yeah. then you're able to help accordingly. Mm-hmm. And the last step, um, as the friends did with the paralytic, after you have helped them with their needs and you're at that point where you are comfortable with each other, this person trusts you, you are, you are in a better position to, to take that friend or that person to Jesus. Mm. It will be easier to minister to that person after you have helped them with their need. So I think these are the steps that Jesus took in, in the Bible and um, Christ tells us to follow these things. Mm. And it's, it's an example of how we can minister to people. Yes. And um, one of the steps you mentioned, trust. When, when uh, the person is, you've won their confidence. Yes. It means now they trust, um, you know, what, um, whatever you bring to them. Yes. Um, one person once said that um, people don't care what you believe until they believe that you care. Yes. For them. Yeah. So, um once they once you win their confidence and looking at the paralytic, mm. if this man um, was not confident in his friends, I'm sure he would have said, "Guys, you can't pull me to the roof. Yes, I don't trust you. Yes, I you make me fall." But he had uh, that element of trust in them. Yes, um, would like to take a break. Would like to pause here, right. um, and uh, to your viewers, please uh, stay tuned in. Uh, we'll be right back. Please engage with us through the comment section. Uh, Please share our pages, like, and also subscribe. Share with your dear um, friends and family. We'll be right back. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School community. We invite you to continue watching and exploring our study together. To access more of our enriching lessons and dive deeper into the teachings, simply download the adult Sabbath School lessons at www.ssnet.org. Sharing this link can make a difference and potentially save a life. Join us in this journey of spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School family. Welcome back, dear friends. We continue with our study on mission to the needy. As, as a recap, um, there are elements that uh, we just want to re- reflect on, on what we've already discussed in our study. Mm-hmm. So there's, the, um, there's faith, there's action, there's patience, and there's willingness. Mm-hmm. These elements work together yes. as if we want to participate in uh, the mission mm-hmm. to the needy. How do you see them coming together or how would you unpack that? 
Okay, so let's start off with faith. Faith, firstly, you have to believe mm. that Jesus can help you with your situation. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that. You have to. Faith is, is very important when it comes to this process. Mm -hmm. I mean, even after every time uh, Jesus healed, he would sometimes say, your, your faith, faith has made you well. Has made you well. Yeah. So believing that Jesus can do that for you is a very important point. Yeah. So wh while you're there, so believing that Jesus can do that for you yes. or meet your need yes. or uh, satisfy your area of, of want, mm -hmm. um, if you've got that faith, mm -hmm. it then becomes easier for you to help someone and lead them to Christ because you, you have faith in the Jesus who is yes. able to meet their need. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's very correct. Mm. Yeah, we can move then, on to the next Then element. we move on to the next one, action, right? Mm. We have to act upon the faith that we have, mm -hmm. right? Um, as the Bible says, faith without works is? Is dead. Is dead. Yeah. So we have to act upon the faith that we have that Jesus can, you know, um, fulfill our need, mm -hmm. right? Um, then the next one is patience. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is also very key. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be patient. Um, and I like when we said earlier that if, if you want to help someone who is in need, mm -hmm. First, you have to draw close to them. You need to get close to them so that they are able to open up mm -hmm. to you about the issue so that you can help them. Yeah. But you need to be patient for that. You need to be patient. And you look at the patient. story we've, we've, we've um, been discussing, you know, the story of the friends yes. who brought who pulled their friend up the roof mm -hmm. so that they can meet Christ. I'm trying to think um, whether it was a quick job of just hoisting him up quickly mm -hmm. or there was need for gentleness and patience as yes. they pulled him up to. Yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah that, does, that, that does require patience. I mean, I'm sure the person was in pain. Mm. So to take him, a person up all the way to the roof, you have to be gentle in, so that they don't drop them. Mm. To get them up there safely and, you know, to open the roof and take him down again. Mm. It, it's, 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 it's a difficult process and you have to be patient. You need to and, be long-suffering. You need patience yes. to do that. And I'm actually thinking of it um, in, this, in this way that sometimes... Um, you know, if we say, okay, maybe not sometimes, mm. if we want to be involved in the mission, mm. in God's mission, mm. to the needy um, uh, that are around us, mm. um, probably what it means, talking about patience, we need to throw away our watches. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, because the moment we start looking at our watches, mm. we are under pressure to do things at a, mm. within a certain time frame, within, but mm. we just need the patience and allow God to work through us to see that whole process to uh, to the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then we move on to the last point, which is the willingness. You have to be willing to to do the work, mm. to, to 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 help your friend, because if you're not willing, you won't do. Yeah. That's just a law that we have in our life. Yeah. And I just want to move uh, to a point here, which says, do not wait to be told your duty. Mm. Open your eyes and see around you. Make yourselves acquainted with the hopeless, afflicted, mm. and the needy. Mm. Do not wait to be told your duty. Mm. I mean, if you look around, there are many people who, who are suffering, who are in need of something in their life. Even in the church, at our workplaces, everywhere around us, mm. there's always an opportunity for you to help someone. To be of service. To be of service. Mm. But approach those people with understanding, with sympathy, Mm. as we said earlier on, so that they may gain that confidence to be able to tell you what their need is so you are in a position to help them. Yeah. So, yes, don't, don't wait to be told your duty. Just, just look around you. Someone will have a problem. I'm just thinking of, you know, this, uh, the willingness, the last point that you touched on, mm. um, the friends that are pulling their, uh, their friend to, to Christ. Mm. They could have just gone up the roof, but if they were not willing to pull the rope, Yes. Um, their friend was not get, going to get the help that he was not going to get. So that willingness mm. on 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 our part is important mm. to to bring um, our uh, those that are near and dear to us yes. uh, to Christ mm. and also the, the the greater community. And you also make reference of Christ's method mm. alone, as the uh, as you know as we as we as we know it. It says I'll just read here the first um, the first part of that um, quotation, which is found in the book, Ministry of Healing, mm -hmm. it says, Christ's method alone will give true success mm -hmm. in reaching the people. Yes. Um, it doesn't say Christ's method is one of the ways in which we can reach people, mm -hmm. but it says Christ's method alone. alone. Mm -hmm. It is the only uh, way through which 
uh, we can um, get success in reaching people. And yes. interestingly, today as we speak, mm. a lot is going on in the world. There's, um, um, you read the newspapers, there's a growing number of refugees. Yes. Um, there's a growing number, you know, the, the, the imi immigration, immigrants uh, challenges yes. around the world. We've heard so much about them. And the growing number of refugees, um, it's for different reasons. It could be economic, it could be political, mm. it could be. How um, can we be of service to this group? Well, a, first of all, a refugee is um, someone who was forced to leave their country because of, you know, because of circumstances, mm. you know, like we mentioned, it could be extreme weather, a hurricane is swept there or war, mm. famine, and all of those things. I mean, uh, we see a lot of people fleeing the Russia-Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of Ukrainians leaving the country, going to another country. Yeah. And, you know, just yesterday, um, when I was watching the news, um, I see the UK, uh, the United Kingdom, they're debating on what to do with asylum seekers who have fled um, the war that's happening in places like Israel mm -hmm. and, you know, people coming into that country. And when these people come to these countries, they come with nothing. Mm. It's not like they are able to carry their house with them. Mm. They don't carry all of their money with them. Most of the time, they run away from emergency situations. Yeah. You know, so these people are in need of many things, mm. right? Now, to make it worse, in most cases, these people are rejected into the countries which they run towards, mm. right? So these people also feel rejected and, you know, they have nowhere to go. They don't have food to eat. So I think this is where we have to come in and assist those people mm. in their time of need. Mm. Um, and yeah, in, if we read, you know, in the Bible in Deuteronomy, it says, love those who are alien, giving him food and clothing. Mm. We have a duty to help these people mm. because they are in need. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, when we speak of Christ's death mm. for us, mm. he died for everyone, yes. including the, this group of people that we are talking about yes. here, mm. who are under distress, who are refugees, who've, who are seeking refugee, refuge in different places, different countries, mm. as a result of different, um, different situations. And you also mentioned that um, sometimes mm. they just get up and go with the clothes that are on their backs. Yes. That's 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 all they have. Yeah. Um, they leave everything. It could be extreme weather that has destroyed their home. Mm. They seek refuge somewhere. Mm. It could be political situation. It could be um, uh, economic uh, circumstances that has also uh, led them to to do those things. And um, being of service to the group, you also mention mm. um, availability of food yeah. or whatever necessity that they may need mm. um, on a day to day basis. And I think this is the um practical part of yes. of, of Christianity mm. where we become practical mm. in, in in what we do. I don't know whether you've got any further thoughts before we proceed with the study. Yes, I think the, the practical part is is very important. Um, if you really look at the mission of Christ, mm. Jesus in his time was known for what he did mm. through word of mouth from the actions he was doing mm -hmm. and not necessarily what he said. Mm. I mean, anyone can say anything. Yeah, yeah, true. I can wake up today and say, I came from heaven or, you know, and yeah. all of those things. But Jesus became popular through his actions, through the healing he was doing. Mm. So it shows that the doing part is, is important. Our mission is to work mm. out there. I mean, even if we look at um, the disciples, when they got the name Christian, it was because of what they were doing. The Christ-like. They were Christ-like. Mm. So we have a work to do. Mm. It's, it's who we are as Christians. Mm. And for you to be qualified to be called a Christian, it is through your actions. Yeah. And I think the other, as it goes, um, actions speak yes. louder. Than words. Than words. Yeah. So once, um, you know, some... Um, I'm trying to recall how this uh, quotation goes, but it's something like this. Um, mm. I can't hear what you're saying mm. because your actions are making noise. Something like that. Mm. You know, yes. you could be saying you are a Christian, but mm. your actions 
are actually interrupting what you're saying verbally. Yes. You know. Yes. You mean, so um, while we pronounce to be followers of Christ, mm. our actions should actually demonstrate that indeed we are. Yeah. We are followers. Um, yes. That's that's a, that, that's a profound thought. And um, helping the hurt. So Christ had a mission, just like we've got companies, they have mission statements. Yes. Um, why the reason for their existence? In your view, what was Christ's mission statement? Well, in Christ's uh, mission statement is actually found in Luke 4 verses 18. Mm. And it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind mm. and to set liberty to the oppressed. Mm. That was Christ's mission statement. That was Christ's mission statement. He, he, was, he was here to help those who are in need. Yeah. So um, this also reminds me of John chapter 10, verse 10, mm. which says, a thief comes for to steal and to kill. Mm. But I, this is Christ talking. Yes. But yes. I have come that you may have life. Yes. And you may have it more abundantly. Yes. So, um, so that abundant life, mm. even while here before people go to, you know, the new heaven and the new earth, mm. um, Christ wants people to experience that abundance of life even here. Yes. And he's, we are his um, instruments for that. Yes. Um, so there's, I think also an important principle that's coming out here is that um, Jesus is a helper mm. of his friends. He's mm. a helper of friends. Yes. And your thoughts on that? Jesus is definitely a, a helper of friends. I mean, if you look at his life, he was always helping other people, mm. no matter he was. Mm -hmm. In fact, if we, if we look at the, the life of Jesus and we read about his story, most of, most of the miracles that he performed were actually outside of church. Mm -hmm. While he was just going about his way, mm -hmm. someone would approach him with something he need and he would always offer to help. Yeah. No matter where the person came from, no matter what that person's beliefs, beliefs were, he was always willing to help no matter where he is. You know, there's instances where he would get off a boat mm. and he would help someone. Mm. As, we, as we said earlier, he was preaching in a house and someone was brought into the house from the roof mm. and he, he stopped everything he was doing just to help that person. Yeah. So, yeah, Jesus is, is, is definitely a helper and he's shown that in his life. And, you know, the, as, as you refer back to the, you know, uh, lowering the friend down the roof. Yes. Uh, another thought also, um, you know, jumps out for me there mm. of finding innovative ways yes. to help people reach Christ. Any comment on that? Well, yeah. Because they could have used the door. Uh, mm -hmm. They couldn't because it was packed, but they had to be creative yes. to make sure that the person still gets there. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it also boils down back to that point that we raised, um, willingness. Mm. You need to have the willingness to help. Mm. That way you will do anything that you can in order to, to help someone in need, even if the ways that you use are sometimes unconventional. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. And uh, dear viewers, uh, please do stay with us. We are taking uh, one more break. Um, and as we return, we'll come back to wrap up this discussion. We hope you're being blessed. We hope the Lord is speaking to you and we hope he's instructing you mm -hmm. in his word. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School community. We invite you to continue watching and exploring our study together. To access more of our enriching lessons and dive deeper into the teachings, simply download the adult Sabbath School lessons at www.ssnet.org. Sharing this link can make a difference and potentially save a life. Join us in this journey of spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School family. Welcome back, dear friends. Um, as we now wrap up our study, um, we're now looking at Christ's love, um, God's love for humanity. And I'd like us to reflect on John chapter 15, verse 13. It says, Greater love has no man than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Mm. Um, 
other versions would say, greater love had no man, uh, had no man than this, mm-hmm. that a man lays down his life for his friends. And looking at greater love, mm-hmm. um, what's um, in the context of mission to the needy, mm-hmm. what is your, your reflection on it? Um, I think with, in terms of uh, love has a lot to do with you know the work that you do mm. you have to you have to love what you do and you have to feel some type of way for the person in which you're doing the work for mm. um so love plays a greater role in in when approaching you know your missionary work if you look at jesus he he did everything in love mm. and his death alone is the greatest <clears throat> love story yeah. ever known to man yeah. so everything that jesus has done was because he loves it was yeah. because he loves us and we are called to do the same for those who we help mm-hmm. who are in need yeah so um therefore going into mission mm. um it speaks of sacrifice yes because of Christ's love for us mm. he sacrificed his love i mean he he could have enjoyed the splendor of heaven mm. um sitting on the throne angels serving him mm. but he let that go Yes. Out of love. Mm. And as Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, mm. God demonstrates his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, mm. Christ died for us. Yes. So talking of um, service mm. and love, mm. um, it boils down to, you know, love drives sacrifice. Yes. Love drives sacrifice. And um, as we maybe come to the end of this lesson, mm. what would be your key takeaway or reflection um, or reflections, if you've got more than one, on the overall discussion that we've had today? Um, I think the key takeaway for me was that, you know, it, it's really opened my eyes to, to how much work we still have to do. Mm. You know, we see a lot of people suffering around us, as, as we spoke about, you know, earlier. And, you know, the key point that I take from this lesson is that you need to sympathize with people. You need to mm. learn to understand people so that you are an approachable person. I mean, there are people who are suffering around us and some people put a brave face when they go out into the public mm. because they are not confident in, in opening up to you. So they put a brave face on and they put a smile on their face. Yeah. Um, but if we really learn how to, to sympathize with people, I think people will, will open up to you and, and, and tell them and they will tell you what, what is what what need they have in their life, mm-hmm. and from there you are in a in a in a good position to be able to assist that person. And in the end, just as the friends um, of the paralytic, you are able to take that friend to Jesus. Yeah. So I think that's that's what I have taken from from this lesson today. Yeah, and um, I think that is it's quite key. One one good friend of mine um, often says that you know it's easier to say. I have a toothache, I have a headache, mm. um, than it is to say I have a broken heart. Yes. Um, so people in today's language, as we say, mm. people around us are going through the most. Yes. And as we tend to our viewers um, today, um, people around us are going through the most. And these are all mission fields that require us to be of service to God. Because as you recall, our starting point was when Jesus gave us this instruction in saying, in as much as you have done unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So these mission fields that are around us, uh, they are waiting for someone to attend to them, to mingle with them as one who desires their good, to minister to their needs and to win their confidence so that they also open up and uh, that way, will be able to lead many to Christ. I'd like to thank you, my brother, for spending the time um, unpacking this interesting discussion. And we do hope that uh, as we were engaging here with, with, with the viewers as well, um, someone out there has been blessed yes. and uh, someone has been challenged. And I want to thank you for taking the time to study with us. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank <laughs> you.